Okay, welcome to this video about energy stores and transfers in the context of hot stuff. So, energy stores and transfers is a way of thinking about energy um, where we have certain ways of storing energy, chemical energy stores, kinetic energy stores, thermal, etc., and ways of transferring that energy, um, electrical, heating, radiation, and so on. If you're not familiar with this model at all, then hopefully this will give you a bit of an introduction, but you probably need to find another video as well going through all the different types of stores and all the different types of transfers. Now I'm going to try and be consistent in this video uh, that stores are in red and transfers are in green, so we can clearly see the difference between them. We're going to look at energy transfers in the context of three different things, the sun, a wood fire and a hot cup of tea. Um, but not in that order. I'm actually going to do them in the opposite order. And the whole time we want to be thinking about the law of conservation of energy, which says that energy cannot be created or destroyed, only transferred. So in each of these examples, we should be able to account for all the energy. No energy should disappear, um, and no energy should appear out of nowhere. And also... For any energy transfers analysis, we need clear start and end points, so we know exactly what the starting conditions are and exactly what the conditions at the end are, so that we're able to work out what's going on. Otherwise, it's going to be very difficult to, to analyse. So, example number one, a hot cup of tea. Okay, You've got a hot cup of tea, you put it on a table, and let's say um, our starting point is a hot cup of tea that's just been made and our ending point is five minutes later okay when the tea's cooled down a bit and it's nice to drink so what has gone on in that time well in that time I'm sure you'll agree that the cup will have transferred some energy um, to the surroundings to the table that it's on and to the air around it and it's transferred that energy by heating. So it's a transfer of energy by heating. Um, heating is when energy uh, is transferred from something hotter to something colder by conduction or convection. Um, you might also have heard about radiation for heating. Um, for energy transfers, we often have radiation as a separately labeled transfer. Um, so in this case, it will have also radiated, transferred some uh, heat by radiation, by thermal radiation. So energy has been transferred by heating. You can clearly tell this because if you move the cup and you touch the table underneath, the table will be warmer. Um, so energy has been transferred by heating to the table. Uh, it's also been transferred by convection to the air and also some will have been lost by radiation. So energy has been transferred by the cup to the surroundings. Um, where's the energy come from for the cup of tea? Well, what's happened to the cup of tea in that time? In that time, the temperature of the cup of tea has gone down. That means the thermal energy store of the cup of tea has been depleted, it's gone down. It's still got some thermal energy. Okay, so the thermal energy of the cup of tea has gone down that's decreased, oops, it's just off the page there, has decreased because energy has been transferred away by heating and by radiation. The thermal energy of the cup of tea um, consists of the, the vibrations of the particles in the tea and the vibrations of the particles in the cup. Uh, and as it cools down, they're vibrating less, so they've got less energy. So the energy store of the cup of tea, the thermal energy has gone down, it's still got some thermal energy. Even when it's cooled down to the temperature of the room, it still has thermal energy. But the point is that the, the amount of energy in its thermal store has gone down. It's been transferred away by heating and radiation. And obviously it's interesting to think about where that has gone to, but we're not going to think about where it goes to for this video. Okay? Now, the amount of energy lost here from the thermal store must exactly equal the amount transferred away by heating and radiation. So that's a cup of tea cooling down, its thermal energy store is decreased and energy is transferred by heating and radiation. Okay, what's next? A wood fire. Okay, 
we need starting and ending points. Let's say the fire's already going, okay, so the fire's lit, it's burning nicely, um, that's our starting point, and our ending point is five minutes later, again, when the fire is still burning, okay, so it's still going five minutes later, pretty much at the same temperature, okay. What's happened in that time? Well, once again, clearly, energy has been transferred to the surroundings, maybe to some uh, food or maybe to you, by heating, by conduction and convection, and also, again, by radiation, okay? Now, the radiation you can feel, if you are next to, if you're ever next to a really big bonfire um, and you're standing close to it, you can really feel the radiation on your skin um, if it's a really big bonfire and you're close to it. Sometimes you have to step further back because it feels so hot on your skin. Okay, so these things are happening because the fire, just like the cup of tea, the fire is hotter than its surroundings. So it's transferring energy by heating and by radiation to the surroundings. Um, however, is it doing this because it's cooling down? Is the fire, is the temperature of the fire decreasing? Is it losing thermal energy from its thermal energy store to supply this, this heat and radiation? Uh, well, the answer is no, because in our start and end point, we said that the fire was going pretty much to the same temperature, okay? Pretty much constant temperature the whole time. So it hasn't lost heat energy. Where's the energy come from? It's come from the energy of the wood being burned in oxygen in a chemical reaction. So there's a chemical energy store in the wood that has been depleted somewhat, not completely, because the fire's still going, remember, at the end of our five minutes, but the amount of chemical energy in the wood, uh, of, of the amount of wood left, basically, has decreased. So we've decreased the energy in our chemical energy store um, because we've transferred energy by heating and radiation. So it's a different situation to a hot cup of tea. They're both hot, they both transfer energy to the surroundings, um, but the energy store involved is different. Okay, now let's look at the sun. Okay, starting point is now, ending point is five minutes from now, when hopefully the sun is still shining. Okay, what will have happened in that time? Uh, well, the sun will have transferred energy. We know that because we received some of that energy on Earth. Now, it transfers that energy by radiation only. The sun can't transfer energy by conduction or convection, really, because um, around the sun in space there's a vacuum, and conduction and convection can't happen in a vacuum. Okay, so it, it's transferred energy by radiation only. Um, we could, if you want, break that radiation down in, into different parts. So part of that radiation would be light. Okay, um, other parts of that radiation would be um, infrared, which you feel as heat, ultraviolet, which is responsible for sunburn, uh, and then th there are other parts of that radiation too. Likewise, we could have done that for the wood fire too. The wood fire doesn't really emit UV, but it does uh, emit light and it does emit infrared, so we could break that radiation down further. The cup, however, doesn't emit light, so <laughs> a cup is not a luminous object. If you turn all the lights off in a room, a cup does not shine with light unlike a wood fire and unlike the sun. So the sun is transferring energy. Uh, so the transfer is by radiation, which we could break down into different categories. Where's the energy coming from? Is it at the expense of thermal energy? Over those five minutes, is the sun's temperature going down? Uh, the answer is no. The sun's temperature is staying pretty much constant um, and has been pretty much constant for billions of years. So it's not losing thermal energy. Is it losing chemical energy? Is there a chemical reaction going on in the sun? Is there a fuel being combusted with oxygen in the sun? Uh, the answer is no, that's not actually what's going on in the sun. Uh, it's not a chemical reaction. The answer is that energy is being released in a nuclear reaction. So the sun has got loads of hydrogen in it, which can be fused to helium uh, in a nuclear reaction releasing energy. So the sun has a nuclear energy store. There aren't that many things with nuclear energy stores. Um, it's not as common as uh, chemical energy stores, but 
Nevertheless, the sun has a nuclear energy store, and in that five minutes, the nuclear energy store of the sun will have been depleted a bit because it's transferred energy away by radiation and by light. So, hopefully, that's just given you a, a quick reminder of, of, the, of the idea of stores and transfers. So in each of these we had three different stores. The sun has a nuclear energy store, a wood fire has a chemical energy store, and a hot cup of tea has a thermal energy store, and all of these, uh, the amount of energy in that store is decreasing as energy is transferred to the surroundings. And we've just looked at the transfers. The transfers are, are all slightly different, um, because, for example, the sun can't trans, uh, transfer energy by conduction and convection, whereas the hot cup of tea can. So, hope that was useful. Any questions, um, post a comment below, and I'll try and make some more of these videos with more examples. Once you've got some examples in your head of, of these stores and transfers, um, you can start putting them together, putting these ideas together to analyse entire situations, like the sun charging a battery using a solar panel or something like that. Um, but that's quite, it's quite surprisingly hard to do that, so I'll make a few more videos that will hopefully get you on your way.